I'll just let everyone sit down quickly, and you've got the microphone. Over to you, Lucas, and back to Tal. Okay. So I will tell a bit about vector tiles from OpenStreetMap. It will be a bit technical, but I try to make it interesting for everyone. Thank you. <laughs> and I will tell you what vector tiles are, why should you care, and our project, which will help OSM as well. And so it is not just me. There are a lot of other people, Manuel Roth, which, which could not be here, Stefan Keller, Peter Pridal, and Imre Samo is here in the audience somewhere. So they're working on that as well and 10 other mappers, and we worked the past year on this project, and that started as a university project, and we get um, some infrastructure funding from Clockham Technologies, and thank for that. So, and what's our vision? So what we want to do for developers or for other people is to enable everyone to create their own map based on OpenStreetMap. So you can have your own custom map, style it like, like you want, like a pirate map, or I don't know, what you like, and enable people to do that, and all of that open source and free. And so what are these tiles? And in the earlier days, like 2005, when you browsed a web page with a map, you just got one large image. And each time you scrolled, you got another large image. Then Google came up with the idea, let's slice that large image into many small square images, tiles. And so this gives you better performance because it loads many of these small tiles. And you see here, you have an index. So one tile always covers exactly the same area. Why does that matter? You get a lot of good properties from this. You can now pre-compute it and you can cache it and you can render a map once for there and it will always, you can always request it and don't have to re-render it. So tiles, and a few years later, we have vector tiles. So now clients are more powerful, and we can now uh, have maps on our phones in the browser, and they actually render the map on the client side. And to do that, we now no longer send the image, but vector data to the client. And because we learned tiles are great, we apply the same principles. You could send GeoJSON, but in this talk, I will focus on Mapbox vector tile specification, and so now we cut vector data into these squares. And now we have even more advantages. We have much better user experience because, for example, we can show you the language in uh, the labels in your language. We could adapt it to a day-night mode. And you can style on the client. So you could even user-defined styles if you like a color more. And they're even smaller than tiles. So you need less data. But the biggest thing that is often overlooked is I can create vector tiles just once. I can create one set, like for creating nice base maps, or I know uh, from OpenZMap, they create a vector tile layer just for C-specific spe things, or perhaps for hot, you can create a vector tile layer. And someone renders that once, and then everyone can use and style it. And that would be really nice if we go more in this direction. And we make use of this fact. So, you want to create your own map now. So you need these vector tiles, and you need a style. And this style is a JSON document, and I will be talking about the Macbox GL style specification. So you have these two things, and then you need a client to render them into an image. And one good example here that works very well on all platforms is Mapbox GL, but OpenLayers 3 has support for it as well. So you really have the vector data and the style description that looks like this. For example, here, buildings give them this color, gray color, and then the renderer turns them into a nice image on your device. Okay, need vector tiles, where can I get them? So there are um, vector tile services. Mapbox is one of the biggest ones, but, so you need to pay per map view later on, and actually, while the processes are open, the data is not, the vector tiles. And I think from OpenStreetMap, vector tiles should be ODBL as well. You should be able to download and have them yourself. And you're vendor locked in. If a company goes out of business, what do you do? If you're locked into their ecosystem, you need an access key. And if you want to have offline use cases or use it in your company, in a firewall, in a plane, which have use cases, you can't do that. So that's where we come in. So the hard part about creating your map is the vector tiles. So we do that for you. We took the time and we created a nice uh, base layer for creating maps. And we pre-rendered the entire planet for you. So we calculated 360 million tiles, did them once. And now you can have a USB stick with 55 gigabytes. 
and you have the entire vector data of the planet. You can plug that in and you have the entire planet and go zoom in everywhere and you have the data there. And the vector tiles are open source. You can download them. They're under ODBL. The workflow is open source. So do what you want. And you have no ve uh, vendor lock-in. If we go out of business or we no longer want to do something with this project, you have the tiles, you have everything. You can host the tiles yourself, build up your own business, and you can do it offline. You can make offline desktop applications, mobile applications. So let me show you how that actually looks like. So we have our website here. There are some the vector tiles. And we try to have great content with documentation, with videos, but the simplest way to get started is if you go on maps. There we have a collection of some free map styles. And you could choose one, and then you have the HTML here. You can just copy that. Yeah, that works. And now I will create an HTML file. So, simple HTML file, and here we reference this style, and it is using a CDN, so it's using our servers. Good, that's all we need. We open the map, and here we have it, our own map. You can now use that in your website with a different style, and you have your own map. Okay, but now we want the tiles, vector tiles. We want to host them ourselves, and we perhaps want to adapt the style a bit. So next step. We need to download the vector tiles. And like Mapsen, you can download the entire planet, 54 gigs. You can download 20, uh, 200 countries and 600 cities. And of course, we're going to do it with Brussels. And I already downloaded it, but you can see how fast that goes. And so we have these vector tiles. Now we need to surf them. Let me delete that. And there is a small tile server we can install with Node. That should work on all platforms. Does have a GL light. So I'm not going to do the installation, but it should work as well. And I can run that now and just pass in this MB tiles file. And that's just a SQLite database with all the tiles in it. So Brussels, Belgium. It's running on port 8080. Let me find the mouse cursor. So, so port 8080. So, and we can go on the X-ray view, and we see this is the actual vector data of Brussels. So we can hover over it, and we see the attributes, and yeah, we have the polygons, the lines, and now we can style that. And even if you don't want to go the vector tile route, there's a more advanced version called Tiles over GL which can even serve raster tiles from the same server. And there's this tile JSON URL, which contains all the information we need. So we're going back to that later. Now I have the vector tiles. We want to create our custom style. And usually, you would use Mapbox Studio for this, but I've been working on our own style editor, so we don't have to use cloud-based software. I'm going to reset the style here. OK, so let's do live debugging. OK, self-healing. And let's zoom into Brussels. And that's the same style. And now we want to switch from our CDN in sources to our self-hosted vector tiles. So we copy this endpoint, we paste it, that's it. We switched. We're now on our own vector tiles. And let's change a bit the styles here. So I'm not quite done yet with the editor, but I can show you how to style a bit around on the buildings. Let's make them a different gray, give them a black outline color, and yeah. We can toggle the visibility. We can remove something if we don't want it. Let's style the parks as well. Yeah. So, so if you know hex code colors by heart, but I want to build a uh, color picker here as well. And OK, let's style. Yeah, that's enough. Let's demo. 
and I can save it, and you see that's actually running locally, my style editor. So I don't want you to have to use a SaaS provider, you can run that yourself. And now we're going to download the style, this JSON file. So, and I'm going to copy it over to the directory here. So, just copying the file over. And give it a nice name, Southern Style. So, we can take a look at it. And you see, actually it looks like that. And you could edit that by hand, but why would you if you have an editor? And for, I want to enable people who don't want to do this to create their own maps as well. And here in sources, you see we reference our local server. So we are completely independent now. And now on our HTML page previously, we are going to replace the style here from the CDN with our own JSON file. So, switch to our own style with our own server. And let me set up a small HTTP server on port 8081. So everything can fail now. Good, we're zoomed in too much now because we only have downloaded data for Brussels. And I have some data in the upper zoom levels to make it look good so we can zoom into Brussels. Um, hmm, Brussels. So, and here we have our style from, that we created previously. We're running our own style, our own vector tile server, completely independent. And that's what I want to do with this project. So, again, if you just need a map, you can probably use the CDN, copy the HTML code of a map someone designed, and use that. But you can also serve your own vector tiles. You download them from the page for your country or the entire planet. You run a tile server and serve the tiles, and then you use those tiles in your style. And then you want to create a custom map style. And for that, I created this new tool, Maputnik, and you download a style, and if you don't want to start from scratch, and then you point, point that style to your self-hosted vector tiles, and you can tweak around. In the future, I want to do for more complex base maps. And so we can create beautiful, so if someone has a talent for that, you can create beautiful maps now without much technical knowledge. So, and I don't want you to use Mapbox Studio in the cloud if you are in the OSM universe. So I'm building a free alternative that you can uh, run locally. And so if you're a company that is using Mapbox GL, you should really think about doing a small pledge on my Kickstarter campaign to fund that because that's a really small investment for the price of a monthly subscription to Mapbox, we can create an open source tool. And I just want to get started here and later give this over to the community, completely open source. We decide the features together. That's the plan. So come talk to, with me afterwards if you have input or want to use something like this. So, and not only can we do web maps, we can also do mobile apps using Mapbox native SDK, which are open source, and these are just great. You can use, create iOS apps, Android, or even desktop apps with Qt. And the cool thing is, because we can download the vector tiles, we could create an app that has the entire planet offline, if you have that much storage. Or let's imagine you go to a city and then you download the city you are. And you have it offline. And we have a prototype app called awesome to vector tiles If you search it in App and Play Store, you can already feel a bit what you could build as developer. And we hope uh, some great apps will come up with this and use that. And in the same spirit, there is a similar project from the same university, also built together with Clock and Tech, where you can download geo name data, so the gazetteer data. So you can just search for Brussels and you immediately get the bounding box where that is and you can build your own offline nominat team. So that's another key part for creating an offline app, offline search. So to sum it up, we have the process and the vector tiles on the website. You can download the entire planet, 54 gigs or uh, 700 cities, 220 countries. The workflow to create them is open and scalable. So if you're creating workflow, take a look there or talk with me. And 
Also, the vector tiles are under the same license as OSM, ODBL, so you can use them. And the vector tiles, we try to keep them up to date with OSM. Currently, we're lagging behind, but that's just because we don't have the servers. But we, we could actually be like one day up to date with OSM and have it always downloadable. So thanks. There's more information on the website, and I'm keen for questions. And please, just ask. There's no stupid question. Go to the GitHub, ask anything, or hit me on Twitter or per email. So I'm looking forward to talk with you afterwards. Brilliant. Thank you, Lucas. I see some hands up already. And remember, as Lucas said, if these speakers are around, go find them, chat to them, and uh, ask questions that we didn't let you ask. Great work. Um, I noticed that the, um, the code using still has a dependency on the MacBotGL library. Um, is, is there any... Uh, I mean, last time I looked, there's no good plugin at all for Leaflet. Um, there's no plugin for... Um, Apple MapKit, that kind of thing. Is there any, is anyone or are you planning to work on a, a leaflet plugin so that we don't have to scrap lots and lots of existing code, um, you know, for example, drawing and all kinds of other things that are based on leaflet and have to move our entire library over to uh, Mapbox GL or something else? So I'm, I think you can use Mapbox GL as a layer under leaflet. You can combine it that way. Or for example, with a vector, uh, with tiles over GL, you can serve roster tiles, so you can combine it that way. Uh, or perhaps, I'm not sure, perhaps you also talk about styling leaflet maps in an editor like this, so I have also interest there. Perhaps we can talk about this later. Yeah. Cool. Let me find some. Did I see a question up there? Oh, dude, that's a brand new, isn't it? One and a half. Gotta be so fit by the end. <laughs> uh, can we pass that down? Thanks, great work, really great. Uh, two questions, uh, a legal one and a technical one. Technical, do you render stuff on the back end? Um, like, can you, can you do raster with layers, with like GL layers on the back end? Or do you use native GL for that or? Um, you mean when we, on tiles over GL, if you right. serve raster tiles. So talk with Peter Predal afterwards about this. Okay. I don't uh, think so. All right, and the legal question, um, when you create the vector tiles, yeah. what data structure do you use? Because we heard from Mapbox that they actually don't want community to use their data structure. Ah, okay, the licensing issue. So we have an issue that is linked here, where you can make up your own mind about our licensing problems with Mapbox. I'm obviously biased, so if I say anything, that's my opinion. I think you should make your own. But still, I'm looking for a compromise, and we hope one to reach in this conference. So sorry for this information, but I can't. <laughs> we can talk afterwards for <laughs> more personal opinion. That might be something we need to ask Mapbox later. Uh, there's a question here. Let's go with that. Hi. Yeah, it's um, really good stuff. Uh, what's the uh, is the the style an open standard? Or is that the Max Box That's the Mapbox GL style specification. But I can imagine that this can become a standard. So with an open layers plugin, for example, someone is working on that to display that in open layers. And so I talked with several people, and that's probably the best thing we got to a, a style standard that doesn't suck. OK. Just to let you know, I am checking the website if there's any questions from the live feed put on the on the program page for this talk, and I'll look, if you're quick. Uh, let me add, I also think this is truly impressive. Um, as you move to the higher Zoom levels, you are uh, inevitably having to lose some detail. Is that your decision, which features are removed uh, to teach Where you? are you, so they can look? I'm here. Ah, good. <laughs> uh, good. Um, so where we lose detail, yeah. Uh, so, for example, at yeah, we, we, we make our decisions where to lose what. Only here we display forests. But you can assume that at the most detailed level, we still don't have everything in OSM because not everything is relevant. This style doesn't display it, but actually there's every POI, every, even house numbers. We are pretty detailed here. And you can get quite forest styling. And if you 
or missing a set, like OpenSea map has a lot of very special C specific things I don't understand if you're a sailor. And these things we don't want in a base map vector child set. But then you can create your own. And actually, it's very easy to combine two of these layers together, and it's still fast. I hope that answers the question. But it, it's your decision what, what is being lost yeah. um, in yeah, your that's, layer. That's a decision based on what's important to create a base map in this case. Mm. But I know there are, you can also display everything at zoom level eight, like here, if you're building population maps, for example. That's, yeah, but it's a decision. You have to make that in order that it's still smooth because it's drawn on the client. So if you had, if, if sort of me or, or this chap set this up ourselves on our own servers, we could configure that so that a certain thing shows at a high zoom level and the data's there to be stored. Um, so we created the vector tiles for you because it's quite expensive to do that. Ah, right. But <laughs> if you render your own, you could do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, there, the beauties of open source. Um, any questions? Oh, from the front to the back, from the front to the back. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, really. <laughs> Thanks. Um, this is technically really impressive. Um, one of the things that I was, so in my day job, I do cartography from time to time. Yeah. So I'm wondering where, I guess, what types of decisions have you had to, had to make during the project and what have the hard ones been and what have the easy ones been and what's your thought process been uh, kind of coming at it from a cartographic perspective? Um, so labeling is a hard problem because in OSM you don't have all the information. You sometimes have population data but the population is, for example, difficult to derive nice labels. And so, actually, on these Zoom levels here, OSM is no longer the perfect data source. You need to merge in natural Earth uh, data sources to get a bit more generalized version. That's, for example, interesting in OSM or in OpenStreetMap. You also don't have nice labels of the sea, that this is the Mediterranean. You just have a point, which is nice for data purposes, but for a cartographic aspect, you want a cool lake line or a, and yeah, also what is important if you have poise, so points of interest here. So you also need to do some, some ranking at what point, sorry, at what point I'm going to show which shops, and we usually use the size of the area of a shop and um, like police, we say it's a bit more important. Yeah, these, but I love uh, chit chat. We can go into detail more. I can take this all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we've got lots of time. So I think I might just allow one more question and then give you more lunch time after my uh, notices. Do we have one more question? Yeah, here we go. Um, I have the impression that through uh, vector tiles, you could also do some routing uh, offline. Is that the case? Did you think about it? Um, I'm not sure whether Mapbox has a prototype for routing, but I think for that it's really not the most suitable. You want your own node data there. There is an uh, interesting thing, QA tiles they're called, which are also used by the OSM analytics to do some kind of analytics, but they're not perfect for routing, I think. So I think not. Cool, thank you Lucas for that.